surprising to us. One of the things we did see positive effects was an angle of rotation. And here's the pre-surgery footprint. And then you can see the rotation out at, in the controls. And then with light treatment, we get a nice recovery um, on this angle of rotation. Other things that we found in that study was that we, we uh, did, uh, we looked at gene expression, and we found decreases in, not, in a number of pro-inflammatory markers, and um, uh, such as IL-6, and we found numbers in uh, chemokines such as MCP1. And this was then at six hours post-injury. So you can see that we got a significant reduction in IL-6 and in MCP1, which is involved with attracting macrophages and microglia into the area. And we also got a significant decrease in INOS, which is involved in neurodegeneration. We also found that we had fewer macrophages and activated microglia, which came into the area. So we, we feel basically we've changed the kind of secondary cascade of events um, during this process. We also had a decrease or a shift or a delay in the astrocytic activation and in T lymphocyte invasion. And so uh, basically, as I just said, we feel we're changing the secondary cascade with the application of light. We started right after the injury and that this, when the axons do sprout and come into the scar region, that the environment is more suitable for getting past the lesion and into the distal cord. I just want to briefly um, tell you uh, some things about olfactory and sheathing cells. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware of them, the pros and cons. Um, some of the, we did do a study in, in 2002 with another student of mine where we found that we got a better result functional and uh, supportive regeneration when we combined methylprednisolone and OECs. And one of the things we've done, we use light actually on a lot of cell types in my lab, on normal human neuronal progenitor cells, on different types of neurons where we could affect neuronal elongation. Um, one of the exciting things we found is on progenitor cells, um, we can get these cells to grow without any additional growth factors um, or serum added to the medium because if the light turns on in that cell the factors that that cell needs and they produce their own factors. Um, so we, we had uh, decided to look at some of the changes we might see on the OECs in culture and we found that a number of like brain derived neurotrophic factor, glial derived neurotrophic factor was significantly increased in the in vitro model as well as collagen. We didn't see a change in uh, VEGF. So, Thinking about this, while well, we thought we did have OECs, we've um, had a grant um, very happily, I would say, supported by the state of Maryland to harvest human OECs. Um, this was an IRB through with Walter Reed Medical Center. Um, and so what we're interested in is this interaction of using light-treated OECs or transplanting step OECs or other cells into the cord and taking advantage of lowering of this immune response. Um, and so we started some experiments in this area. Now one of the things we've done, because as you can imagine, um, the stringency of spinal cord research, which it should be, it needs to be, but we've now taken up where we collect data, we do the injury, we do a treatment, and we look at 21 days out. So we have a lot of collected data at 21 days to get an indication if the therapy is working. This kind of helps us make decisions on where to go versus doing a very expensive 10, 12 week study. So we've started to look at combinations of light alone, OECs alone, OEC and light. And this is a very interesting column for us because what we did was we delayed started treatment for 24 hours. Um, and this is thinking down the line for clinical relevance. And we found we got a significant increase in light, light with OECs, and uh, this delay therapy I told you about compared with our vehicle and tram treatment. And footprint analysis for this series at the three week time points, if we again look at this rotation, 
um, you can see here's pre-surgery, what we get with the footprint analysis, that three weeks post-control, three weeks with the OECs and with the light, which is much improved, and light and OEC, which is better. So we're considering the, the value of this in combination. Another thing we wanted to do in the lab, I told you we started seven years ago, was to introduce the contusion model to the lab. So my laboratory and I went up to Rutgers and, and spent a wonderful time, a wonderful three days at that workshop, um, learning to do BBB properly, <coughs> testing, and um, to, uh, to learn how to do the contusion model. And Phototherapy purchased um, for my laboratory the NYU Impactor. So starting this past summer, um, we've started to do a lot of animals, and Weiss Young will tell you you have to do at least 30 rats, then you can give them a call and say, am I doing this right? <laughs> so we've done our requisite at least 30 animals. We, we're getting very good at actually getting a consistent lesion. And one of the things, to put, you know, the first question, this is 21-day data. I haven't taken this out further yet, but we're hoping to, that um, if you look at this data, and you can see the green line was our controlled hemisection, where, and where, you know, we're labeling the CST axons here for counting the same way we did before. Um, you can see we get a quite low numbers and you get a feel for the distance. Um, with the impactor method, more of the neurons are spared in this model, we're finding. But the really interesting thing to us in both of them, the red line is the uh, impactor lesion with the light and what we're seeing in both of the models is that we get these comparable outgrowth rates and an increase with the light. So we're anxious to uh, go ahead and broaden that out. Um, current product tricks and the status of where we are on the light therapy with translation to the clinical studies. Um, one thing is I have gotten a grant from uh, the, it's a congressional line item money um, from the Department of Defense for Brain Injury and Spinal Cord Injury Studies. And uh, this is to start looking at um, the efficacy of light therapy and chronic injury. So um, we've got that grant just this last year. This past October, we started doing a chronic injury models, um, both with contusion and with um, the dorsal hemisection model where we can have comparison data. Um, so we did the animals uh, in October, and this February we started to do a series of light therapy, OEC, OEC light therapy, and we're looking at bridging methods of not going through the scar, but going around the scar. And the axons, actually, even if you look without something to attract them to bridge, you'll see that they will tr make an attempt to go around the scar area if you look at these labeled axons. And that's very interesting to us, and we're, we'd like to try and take advantage of that natural tendency. Um, I'm sorry I don't have uh, data to report on that. We've just 